Today, I'm going to talk about a simple way for you to look at a scene and know how to paint it. You might hear me talk about my three-step process. I get a lot of questions about what is the three-step process in painting because I refer to it in a lot of my other videos. It's learning how to see your scene in terms of values, lights, midtones, and darks. So let's go back to the beginning and talk about what values are. Any scene that you look at is made up of values and values are simply how light or how dark something is. So think of a range of values. Look at the lightest lights and the darkest darks. And let's add a number to that. Zero is your absolute brightest and 10 is your absolute darkest. So every scene that you look at, whether you're looking at a photograph, whether you're looking in person, has a range of values from lightest to darkest. Once we establish that, we split this into three different groups. Of that zero through 10, you have zero through three. Those are your light values. And then you have four through seven. Those are your middle values. And then you have eight through 10. Those are your dark values. So when you combine all of these values, you get the full range of the scene that you're looking at. And why is this important? when we are painting. Well, in watercolor, a lot of times we paint from light to dark. So we need to have a plan to paint our lights, our midtones, and our darks. So this is a great way to help you organize your painting process. And beyond that, it's a great way to know how to preserve the lights and how to make the light believable in the scene that you're painting. And that's the whole reason we're doing this, right? That's why I pick scenes when I paint is usually that light effect. I love seeing the effect that light has on the scene. As I mentioned in watercolor, we usually paint from light to dark. And you can simplify your painting into this way of thinking. So you have three washes for your painting. That is the three step process. So let's talk about what each one of these steps is and how we can do this. In step number one, we are painting our lightest values. So that is zero through three on our scale from light to dark. So look at your scene. What are the lightest areas of your scene? What are the colors in those areas? After we've thought through this process, we can paint the lightest values of the scene. So I do this by wetting down the front and back of my paper and going around the scene. Usually that includes the sky. Maybe there's a road area that's lighter, any of these light values. And I paint a nice fluid wet into wet wash with these colors, all the bright light areas of the scene. And I let these colors flow into each other. It's really a fun, loose part of the painting process. And then I let this dry. And then we're moving into the middle values. Now this is the most challenging part of your painting because you're trying to paint these middle values in a large shape, a connected way. You're merging the middle values in this object with the object that's next to it. You're looking for the large shapes that connect the scene, that allow you to see the scene as a whole. That's really the tricky part that we need to start to figure out is seeing those large connected shapes of the scene. And when we paint them in a large connected way, it really creates a unified, stronger painting than if we were creating a lot of little disconnected bits around the scene. And one awesome thing about watercolor is when you are painting in your middle values and letting these colors flow together, this beautiful thing happens on your paper where one wet edge meets another, you have a, a soft blending of those colors on your paper. It's really what makes watercolor unique. And so whenever we can take advantage of this, we should do that because it really is a wonderful part of our medium that is worth highlighting, that is worth tapping into. It's important to squint at your scene. I talk about squinting a lot. And when we squint, it takes away some of the unnecessary detail it simplifies the color of the scene and we can really start to see what unites our scene rather than what separates our scene. Now, we are able to move into the darks. The darks and the details. This is really the part of your painting 
that brings all of it together. Don't judge your painting before you get your darks and details in. To really bring that scene together, to really make our light stand out, and to make things more believable, we need our darks and our details. A lot can happen near the end of your painting. Think about your focal area first. I always say that, start with your focal area. That way you're not going too strong in one area and creating competition for your viewer's attention all over the painting. This is the most fun, exciting, fulfilling part of the painting because all of your hard work is paying off. The light is showing up and it's starting to really look like something. And I think that's one of the most challenging parts of this process in painting is because it looks pretty abstract and loose most of the way. And we don't really get that payoff that we're really wanting. We don't get that strong light, those details, that real sense of life in the painting until the end. But we have to stay true to the process. So after we get in the darks and the details, take a step back, see how things are looking, and your painting is done. The more that you practice this three-step process, the easier it becomes, and the more confidence you're gonna to feel to take on any subject that you are excited about because you'll have a good, solid game plan to paint the scene. Have you ever been really excited about a painting and you get all set up, you find that right reference that you're excited about, and then it's time to go and you feel lost? You ever had that experience? You just are having a hard time finding consistency. Some of your paintings turn out, some of your paintings don't turn out, and you're not really sure why. Well, I have a free resource that I wanna to give to you today that can help exactly with these problems. My five steps to plan a successful watercolor painting. I walk you through the crucial planning phase of your painting that will help you understand what you're going to paint first, second, and third. The planning is really so important, especially in watercolor. This medium is harder to correct. It's so immediate. So having that plan is very important. I send you a PDF that you can download. And the great thing about this is you can have it on your phone, you could print it out, and you can take a look at these crucial planning steps before you start each painting to ensure that you're thinking through these important things as you get started. You can download this right now before you start your next painting. All you have to do is follow this link here and download my five-step guide to planning a successful watercolor painting. 